Shibboleth Active Authentication is needed in order for single sign-on to work with a smartphone, Microsoft Outlook or other non-web clients. Configuring Active Authentication takes a few tricks right now. It could change in the future, but by the beginning of May 2013, this is still how it works. First of all, you must install the ECP extension, announced client proxy extension, which is included in Shibboleth 2.3.3 and later. So it's not needed in our case since we are running version 2.3.8. Couple of feedbacks. First, this version implements the SAML 2.0 ECP specification. And secondly, it is currently limited to basic authentication. So what we have to do now is to enable HTTP basic authentication in the captive Tomcat server. This means that we should add a new Realm element right after the other one in server XML. So we take server XML from the Tomcat configuration. We go to the bottom of the file and we paste the needed Realm. Now, since we cannot have two Realms within the same engine node, we needed to wrap them with a combined Realm element. We put it here and we close it there. Well, we save the file and close the server XML. Now, we need to provide the ECP entry point on the service provider side. In order to do that, I can simply duplicate a line in the Windows Azure AD metadata and change it. The metadata is here. We edit in Notepad and then we duplicate this line. Copy and paste. We change the index from 1 to 2 and then we change the bindings to pause. Please note that paus is the SOAP string reversed. Now we have to add a SAML2 ECP profile entry to the Windows Azure Active Directory Reline Party configuration node. Reline Party is here. We go there. Line 65. We duplicate this line for passive clients and we change to active clients. Rather than SSO, we need ECP and rather than conditional for the sign assertions, we put always. Save and close. Now, in order to enable ECP extension, you need to edit the web XML file, which is the Shibboleth web application configuration file. Please note that you will have to recompile Shibboleth after this change. Your task here is just to uncomment a few lines at the bottom of the file and make two little changes. The file is here under Shibboleth install, then src main web app and web inf. Web XML edit, we go to the bottom and we remove these comments, this one and this one. The two changes are first of all the user, the role name cannot be user but should be star, any user. And secondly, the URL pattern should match what we have in PowerShell for the federation, Shibboleth Active Federation, which is this one, Profile SAML to SOAP ECP. So we copy this string and we paste it here. Save and close. Before rebuilding the application, we have to update build XML file to reflect the certificate file name. Installer, resources, build XML, edit, 
and then we go to line 181 and we write my STS. We save and close. The last trick before compiling is to prevent Shibboleth from sending the transient name ID by commenting a line out in attribute filter XML. Attribute filter, this is the part to remove. Rather than removing, we can just put a comment. Again, save and close. Well, it's all done now. And now we can compile it. Now, cd program files shibboleth install. We run install. It takes a couple of seconds. Oh, four seconds, sorry. Now we can restart the service. We have finally reached the end. We already tested the passive authentication and now we test the ECP. To do that, we can simply run the Outlook 2013 wizard to add a new account, Sarah Connor. Click on Add New Profile. Then we put the display name, the email address, and the password. We click on Next, and in a few seconds we should have all the information collected and the account properly configured in Outlook 2013. Voila! It works! I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for watching and Arrivederci!